So we are going to start our worship service. I'm so glad that you are here today on this beautiful Sunday morning and that we have come together to be the body of Christ in this place. I hope that you feel the welcoming spirit of Jesus Christ as we gather together today in his name. I will remind you that you can, I will keep you muted and then I'll unmute you at certain times. You can also unmute yourself using the button in the lower left hand corner of your screen. In the upper right hand corner, you can choose between speaker view and gallery view so that you can get a picture of just one person at a time or you can get a picture of all of our smiling faces together. For announcements, uh, Mary McCord is going to share a special minute for mission for us today about Journey Home. So that is going to be great. And uh, I don't think I have any other announcements. Just, we're going to have some committee meetings. We could talk about that. We're going to have at 6.30 on Wednesday, Christian Ed Committee is meeting. And at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, trustees are meeting. So if you're part of that group, make sure you check your email and get the Zoom link and join us for that. That's coming up this Wednesday. Uh, also, Sunday school has started happening on Sundays again, so if you're at all interested in being part of that group, we're studying other religions right now, um, you're welcome to join us. That is at 930 on Sundays, and so if you want to be part of Sunday school, it's 930 on Sundays, just send me an email and I'll let you know and send you the link for that class. Anybody else have announcements this morning? Carrie says there's a birthday coming up on Tuesday for Claudia. Claudia, do you have a birthday coming up? Unmute yourself and tell us. Yes, she does. I can't hear you. You got to unmute. There you go. I am turning 50. Whoa. No, she's not. She's turning 50. <laughs> Should we try to sing happy birthday? Oh, no. I think we need. Let's do it. Lars we need to do yesterday. Cynthia, too. Cynthia was yesterday. OK, Cynthia was yesterday. <laughs> Lars is upset. It's going to be catastrophe. We're just going to do it. Then I'll meet you. Here we go. Happy birthday. One, two, three, go. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. To you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Ah, that was awesome. Good job, everybody. Yay. Any other announcements this morning? Somebody had talked to me about something we were going to say on Sunday, but I don't remember what it was. So if you are that person, you best be <laughs> stepping up because I don't remember. All right. Going once, going twice. Announcements are gone. Let's take a moment then and center ourselves for this time of worship. Like we do, I remind you that uh, this now is our church. This now is our holy space. So I invite you to take a moment and center yourself for this time. If you are able, put two feet on the ground and check in with your body. Gather yourself into this time and place uh, as we come before our Lord in worship. Let us take a moment and we will have three deep breaths breathe in and out breathe in and out breathe in and out God is with us as we gather in this holy time and space. Please join with me in the call to worship printed in your order of worship. O oh Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. My foot stands on level ground. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. Let us worship God. Neil's going to screen share our first hymn.
That was my fault. That's uh, no problem. No problem. I got and I also had a, I made up words somewhere. <laughs> hey, you should have heard mine. <laughs> the congregation's going to be singing. I'm counting on them. They're not going to be listening. Yeah, right. <laughs> Can't hear me. Okay, my apologies. Okay, no problem. Okay, let's try it again. Go ahead and now let's hang out. Come, labor on, 719. Another wonderful, awesome thing. Here we go now for our prayer of confession. Jesus Christ overcame evil with good so that all people may be saved from sin. Let us then confess our need for grace, confident of God's forgiveness. Please join with me in the prayer of confession printed in your order of worship. God of mercy, we confess that like the disciples, we set our minds not on divine things, but on human things. Doubting your loving care, we grab for more than we need. Doubting your loving purposes, we shrink from living as your followers. Doubting your loving plan, we become stumbling blocks in your creation. Forgive us that we may gain new life in you, for it is in Jesus' forgiving name we pray. Amen. Jesus lived and died for our salvation. In return for our old life of sin, he promises a new life of grace. Know in your heart today that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. <laughs>
Now, friends, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Peace with your neighbors. Peace, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Peace. Peace. Hi, neighbors. Well, hello. Hello. Right back at you. Peace, everybody. Didn't turn around. <clears throat> uh -huh. yeah. All right, it's show and tell time. Who has a show and tell? Abigail, yes. What would you like to share? I have this painting I painted last night. Whoa! That is really neat. And I'm going to kindergarten. Oh, you are. Who's your teacher? Mrs. Moore, she's really nice. She is really nice. Oh, we love Miss Moore. Look, Ruth, did you paint too? Yeah. Yeah, Ruthie painted that. That's a very nice painting, Ruth. Very nice work. Good job. Very nice, friends. That's great. Who else has a show and tell? Snow, do you want to share? Uh, yes. Uh, I have a tulip. I say it's from Holland. Mm -hmm. It's from Holland. A tulip? Actually, Greenland. No way, Leo. There's no Greenland flowers. <laughs> what a nice tulip. Did your dad bring that for you? That's very nice. This is from me and did a Lego set. Oh, that is an awesome Lego set. Safari Legos. Nice. Thank you for sharing. That is really cool. I made it with my dad. You made it with your dad. That's great. Ian wants to show Ian wants to show and tell. Yes, let's hear from Ian. Hi everybody, yeah. I got back from Greenland yesterday. Yeah, and then we had an airplane in Greenland. Okay, great. We had a, a DC-3 airplane, but it's a brand new version of it. It's all rebuilt, and we were dropping probes in the ocean to look at how the ocean water is melting the Greenland ice sheet. Because the no, it called um, ocean <laughs> melting Greenland is the name of the project, which is <laughs> OMG is the acronym. So everybody thinks that's real funny. <laughs> and so we had uh, seven people over there, and six have stayed, and we had three, uh, two pilots and an airplane mechanic, and, and then we had three scientists, two scientists and a postdoc, thorough researcher, and they we were dropping, we dropped up 85 probes so far, we have 350 to go, and so they'll go, they go down, and we, they go on a parachute out of the airplane. Into a hole. Into a hole, we drop them from a hole in the airplane, that's right, Leo, and then they land, they parachute out of the airplane, and, and they stay deep, deep in the ground, the the oh, ground. oh, 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 uh, and we're flying all over the south of Greenland, and the airplane will be there for about another month, three more weeks, and they'll be doing more of the drops all over. They'll go up to the north, up to the top of Greenland, and so we're just seeing that the whole point of the project is to see how the ocean water is melting all the glaciers in Greenland, and then those glaciers will melt and they'll raise sea level. I'm sure everybody's heard that the sea level rise is going on and so uh, the whole point of that project is to see how warm ocean water melts the ice Greenland ice sheet. Wow that's awesome Ian. That is a cool job. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That was no awesome. Yes that sounds exciting. Thank, Thank you. you. Who else has show and tell today? Oh, 
Aiden, yes. Well, um, so my best friend, um, she went to New Mexico, like, I don't know how long ago, a couple weeks, a couple weeks ago, and so she brought me a couple of things. So she brought me this shirt. Ooh, um, nice! It says, like, Red River, New Mexico. That's and cool. Then she brought me this really sparkly rock. Ooh. And then another one like that, kind of. Cool. And then I have a seashell that she brought me. Wow. <laughs> and then these like crystally rocks. That's neat. <laughs> Thank you. That was awesome that she thought of you and brought such cool things. Thank you for sharing. Who else has show and tell today? Yeah, Cindy. Well, Nancy spoiled my, my, but I had a really nice day yesterday and I got two dozen roses. These are from my daughter, Jennifer. So it was a good day for me and it was so great to go out to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Happy birthday. Thank you for sharing. Those are gorgeous. Who else show and tell? Oh, you have show and tell. Okay. Oh, and I see Amber. Amber, do you have show and tell? Yeah, so before COVID, which sounds like millennia ago, but before COVID, I ordered this piece of Russian folk art, and it took it until two weeks ago to get here. This is it. Wow. That's cool. That's neat. Awesome. Yep. Thank you for sharing. That's awesome. Russian folk art. And Olivia behind me says she has a show and tell. Olivia. Okay. I made this. It's a neck pillow, but it's like an animal. So it has tails, legs, and ears. And I made the face with puppy paint. But it's really, really soft. It's made out of really soft fabric. And I made it. So, yeah. It's a neck pillow. Cool. We've been busy. Busy sewing. Yeah. Other show and tell. All right. I don't see frantic hand waving. Do you see one, Olivia? No. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, we're going to go into our sermon then. Let's do it. Let's take a moment and pray. Gracious God, we ask that you be with us. As we gather around your word and scripture this day, we ask that you open our minds and hearts so that we might understand how Abraham's story and our story collide. Uh, help us to understand who you are. Help us to understand who you call us to be in this world. May the words that I speak and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So today we return to our summer sermon series, Abraham, Birth of the Covenant. Throughout the summer, we've been following the story of Abraham and his wife, Sarah. God chose them to be a blessing to all people, making of them a holy nation. But at this point, they are still without children. In our last sermon in the series, we looked at the horrible story of Sodom and Gomorrah and discussed the nature of sin and God's judgment. This week, those discussions continue. Luckily, though, we're able to leave Sodom behind. Abraham and Sarah are on the road again, <clears throat> and Henry Crows will read our scripture. It's Genesis 20, verses 1 through 18. Good morning. Uh, I'll be reading from the Bible paraphrase, the message, and you can compare that to the uh, uh, new uh, revised standard that you have in the order of worship. Genesis 20, Abraham traveled from there south to the Negev and settled down between Kadesh and Shur. While he was camping in Gerar, Abraham said of his wife, Sarah, she's my sister. So Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent for Sarah and took her. But God came to Abimelech in a dream that night and told him, you're as good as dead. That woman you took, she's a married woman. Now, Abimelech had not yet slept with her, hadn't so much as touched her. He said, Master, would you kill an innocent man? 
didn't he tell me she's my sister? And didn't she herself say, he's my brother? I had no idea I was doing anything wrong when I did this. God said to him in the dream, yes, I know your intentions were pure. That's why I kept you from sinning against me. I was the one who kept you from going to bed with her. So now give the man's wife back to him. He's a prophet and will pray for you. Pray for your life. If you don't give her back, know that it's certain death both for you and everyone in your family. Abimelech was up first thing in the morning. He called all his house servants together and told them the whole story. They were shocked. Then Abimelech called in Abraham, Abraham and said, what have you done to us? What have I ever done to you that you would bring on me and my kingdom this huge offense? What you've done to me ought never to have been done. Abimelech went on to Abraham, whatever were you thinking of when you did this thing? Abraham said, I just assumed that there was no fear of God in this place and that they'd kill me to get my wife. Besides, the truth, the truth is that she is my half-sister. She's my father's daughter, but not my mother's. When God sent me out as a wanderer from my father's home, I told her, do me a favor, wherever we go, tell people that I'm your brother. Then Abimelech gave Sarah back to Abraham, and along with her sent sheep and cattle and servants, both male and female. He said, my land is open to you, live wherever you wish. And to Sarah, he said, I've given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. That clears you of even a shadow of suspicion before the eyes of the world. You're vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to God and God healed Abimelech, his wife and his maidservants, and they started having babies again. For God had shut down every womb in Abimelech's household on account of Sarah, Abraham's wife. For the gifts of Genesis, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, and thank you, Henry, for reading. So if this story seems familiar to you, that's because we read one just like it before. Back in chapter 12, Abraham pulled this trick with Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. What could possibly lead Abraham to sin like this again? Understandably, Abraham and Sarah want to get away from the nearby destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And so they pack up their family and herds and move into the territory of Gerar. Even though God has promised the land of Canaan to their ancestors, they continue to live there as nomads only. When they enter the region, Abraham pulls the same scam he did in Egypt. He says Sarah is his sister. And once again, a ruler is taken in by her beauty. Abimelech, the king of Gerar, takes the elderly Sarah as his wife. She must have been a real looker because at this point she's a hundred years old. <laughs> In Egypt, Pharaoh was afflicted with plagues because of Sarah. Before the same fate befalls Abimelech, he is warned by God in a dream. Abimelech is understandably surprised that he would suffer punishment when he didn't even mean to do anything wrong. Lord, will you destroy an innocent people? Abimelech confronts Abraham over the deception, and Abraham returns to the same excuses as before. He claims to be afraid for his safety, but once again, he is the only one causing harm in this story. He also tries to explain away the sin by pointing out that Sarah really is his half-sister, so it's not technically a lie. Here's another great example of biblical marriage. Abraham is the one who must make the situation right again. He prays for Abimelech and the royal household and the plague passes, but not before he is made wealthy with many gifts. What kind of hero is this anyway? I see some parallels today between Abraham's story and our own. Here we have Abraham committing the exact same deception and sinful behavior as he did decades ago. He hurts innocent people in Abimelech's household, and he hurts his own wife, Sarah. And not only that, 
But Abraham puts the whole plan and promise of God in jeopardy. It wasn't that long ago that God visited with messengers to promise his son in a year's time. And now Abraham offers Sarah's womb to a stranger. Does he not believe God's promise? Or does he simply not care? His lack of faith in this narrative is astounding. We too often find ourselves committing the same sin over and over again in our lives. There might be one mistake we make again and again, or one selfish action we can't seem to help but repeat. Like Abraham, we know better, but we do the wrong thing anyway. We also are often busy justifying our sin. Just as Abraham spends time arguing about how Sarah really is his sister or how he thought he was in danger, so too we are busy trying to explain our own sin and guilt away. How weary I imagine God must be of our constant self-justification. And what about Abimelech in this text? Should he be punished for a sin he committed unknowingly? God certainly thinks so. According to God, Abimelech is at risk of dying if he continues down this treacherous path. This is part of the moral order. Certain deeds have certain effects and outcomes, even if our intentions were not wrong. When thinking about Abimelech's role in this text, I was reminded of the discussion of racism in America. Currently, we have two different narratives in our country. Perhaps it has always been this way. One narrative we tell is that racism and slavery were integral in the founding of this country and are woven into the current fabric of our nation and how it operates. Another narrative says that racism was simply a small sin in the past, and it no longer matters now. In our brown bag book group, we've been reading the book White Fragility by Robin DeAngelo. You might have heard of it. It's been in the news a lot. DeAngelo argues that all white people have been conditioned into the program of white supremacy as part of our experience of America. Therefore, Many of our actions are racist and perpetuate racism, even if those actions are unknown or unintentional. Like Abimelech, I am guilty of a sin. My sin is racism, even if I am unaware of my sinful acts. And like Abimelech, my behavior has consequences to the moral order. My behavior as a white woman in America has consequences beyond my experience. That's simply part of the moral order. And I imagine God would judge me in much the same way Abimelech was judged. For another example of this, think of the way the experience of war affects generations of people. Through the greed and sin of a few, many are drawn then into conflict. Those who would see themselves as innocent are forced into violent conflict and behavior. They commit sin against the moral order, even though they did not consciously choose the conflict. All of this talk probably has you saying, but that's unfair. I'm sure Abimelech would agree. I did this in the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands. But in the moral order of Genesis, each sin weighs on a scale, demanding a just punishment. What is even more offensive here is that Abraham continues to be the one favored by God. Even though his greedy and selfish action causes the problem to begin with, he does not seem to be at the same risk of death that Abimelech does. Here, Abraham, though guilty, is viewed as innocent. Still, God is trying to complete the promise. Still, God is trying to uphold the covenant. 
even though Abraham refuses to believe and his actions put everyone at risk. As we've been following this story of God and Abraham, we're beginning to realize that this story isn't so much about who Abraham is. He's a bit of a cad. Rather, it's a story about who God is, faithful to a fault. Abraham has done very little to make himself worthy of God and God's promise of blessing. And even as he continues to sin, God continues to respond by upholding the covenant. God is the one who is faithful. In our own time and place, I believe that we find God faithful to us as well. The story has moved on from a covenant with one man, Abraham, to a covenant with all people through the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And in Christ, we are all chosen. In Christ, God responds to us all in faith. Though we, like Abimelech, may sin unintentionally in issues like racism, still God offers us forgiveness. Through Christ, the way of life is open to us, as it was to Abraham. And so today, Abraham once again provides us a negative example of faith. Do not go out into the world like Abraham, so sure of your promised status that you act in selfish ways and drag others down with your sin. Instead, this week, we should go out into the world like Abimelech, who, once being made aware of his sinful status, did not set out to make excuses, but who endeavored to make things right. May we do so in our own world this day. Amen. Neil is going to share our special music.
Yay! That was wonderful. Thank you to John for recording that and Kathy for her accompaniment. We come now to our time of prayer and sharing our joys and concerns together as a community. I invite you to unmute yourself and speak your joys or concerns or to tap them, type them or tap them, I guess, in the chat. So uh, let me know what, what, what are our joys and concerns today for our friends and our family and our world? What would you like to pray for? Nancy Jones says joy for apples, definitely. And again, if anyone else needs apples, talk to Jeff and Diana. They got apples and they are so good. Others, joys and concerns. Unmute yourself or type it in the chat. Wave your hand. Joys or concerns. Prayers for Denny, who's having a heart procedure tomorrow. Others, everybody affected by Hurricane Laura. There's a phone number there for apples if you're interested in getting apples. Other joys or concerns. We can continue to pray. Yeah, Susan, unmute yourself. There you go. Um, prayers for my uh, brother-in-law who lost his father a uh, night before last. Got it. Prayers for Susan's brother-in-law at the death of his father. Others. Joys or concerns. Let's see. Pr continue prayers for Paul. We've been praying for uh, the friend of Amber and Tara's, Paul Baird, who's trying to recover from a stroke. Prayers for folks in Portland as unrest continues there and other cities. Others. I'm not seeing more. Um, you can pray for me, put me on your prayer list. My tendon is torn. So the repair I had in June failed. And so um, I'm gonna have surgery again on my foot in the next few weeks. So um, next week I have an MRI so we can get an idea of how bad it is and then we'll make a plan with the surgeon and then probably uh, the week after that or soon thereafter we'll have surgery again on my foot and kind of start over again. So uh, you can pray for me. I'll let you know when I know uh, when that'll be. But yeah, bad news on my foot. Uh, more surgery for me. Any other joys or concerns? I don't see any, so um, let us then turn our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Listening, God, you heard the prayers of Abraham, along with generations of your people. Hear now these prayers, both spoken and silent. We pray for peace where there is conflict, for food where there is hunger, for hope where there is despair, for health where there is sickness, for faith where there is fear, for life where there is death. We pray for the joys and concerns that occupy our thoughts today. We pray for our nation and our world as we continue to struggle with coronavirus. We pray that you would be with us, that somehow our ability to fight this together has become a political issue. We pray for kids trying to go back to school. We pray for people that have lost jobs. Be with our world. We pray for those folks in Texas and Louisiana affected by Hurricane Laura. 
we ask, gracious Lord, that you would be with them, especially in this time of no power, no water. Please keep people safe. May there be no more death. We pray for Susan's brother-in-law at the death of his father. We ask that your comforting presence would be with him. We pray for Denny as he has a heart procedure tomorrow. We ask that your healing hand would be upon him. We pray for Paul as he continues to recover from a stroke. We pray for Portland, Kenosha, and other cities as we continue to struggle with unrest and our inability to discuss issues like racism. We give you thanks in this world for small joys, like an abundance of apples and friends to share time together with. Remember those on our prayer list, continued prayers for Jennifer and Andra, Marilyn and Michael, Georgian, Christine and Logan. We remember our friends in Malawi as the virus is beginning to surge again there. We pray for folks looking for work. We pray for those that are deployed. We pray for the creation, this country and this church. And now we bring before you the silent prayers that rest deep in our hearts this day. Loving God, accept and heed all these prayers through Jesus Christ, the one who has taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, art in heaven hallowed, be, hallowed thy be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, will be done on earth as, earth, as it, is, as in it is in heaven. Give us Give this day our daily, our daily bread, bread, and forgive, forgive us our us debts, debts, as we forgive, we forgive our, our debtors. debtors. And lead us and not into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us from, us from evil. evil. For thine is the, thine kingdom, is the kingdom and the power and, and the glory, the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Right, Mary is going to share with us now a special minute for mission about Journey Home. Well, thank you for the opportunity. This is a shelter that we've begun, and as many of you know, there have been shelters. Um, but they have failed over the years, and so we've started a new one. Here's the location. I wanted to show you a picture of the house. It's south of town, and it's a three-bedroom, two-bath. And so we've been spending the last two months cleaning, painting, things like that. Um, here's what we do, though. We've been working for a shelter since December, so, you know, almost a year. So we've been trying to make it a hub of services no matter where the actual shelter location. And we've coordinated with Mana Harvest for food, with Shiloh, with Salvation Army, with Standing in the Gap, and many local volunteers, and even laundries that have given us uh, tokens so that people can go and get their clothes washed. About every other week, we have giveaways. Giveaways of clothes, of food, school supplies, and home supplies. And I have just been really touched by the fact that people are lined up for more than an hour before we open the giveaways. And then we leave it open as long as we can until everything's gone or until it's nighttime. We've had showered in love where before we had a shelter, they could go to a local um, church and get haircuts or showers. And we had caseworkers there that would help them with documentation. Uh, lots of times, if you've been homeless for a while, you no longer have your driver's license and you no longer have your birth certificate to get the driver's license. And so this led to people getting jobs and jobs, of course, leads to less homelessness. Um, and then we have something called home showers. We've helped people that are on the cusp of homelessness. We help them get a job or get sheltered and then give them a house shower, sort of a housewarming shower. So I wanted to show you, here's one of our giveaway days. And if you wanted to volunteer, this would be a good way to do it. Come out and help us. We, we pull things out. We have to get in our vans, go get the materials and then bring them there. Um, 
here we are again. We try to organize it according to size. This was our most recent one. It was a back to school giveaway. Those are brand new clothes, school books, notebooks, school supplies. Oops. Uh, here's a little bit of a close up of some of the things we give away. Finally, this is food. Um, another way you might volunteer is um, we take our vans to uh, Sedalia and pick up boxes, big boxes of chicken and food from Tyson. And then we have to spend a few hours putting them into court bags, you know, getting them into what you see there, something that somebody could actually take with them. So um, I just wanted, if you wanted to know how you could help, of course, money, everybody always wants money, but we haven't figured where it costs us $325 per person per month. That's really fairly low when you consider some of the social costs that can happen when you have a homeless population. Um, maybe volunteers to help us set up those giveaway days that you saw, volunteers to help us pack food, uh, volunteers for intake and for breakfast. So if you were willing to come from five to 10 o'clock at night, we have an employee there, but it'd be somebody to help welcome people and take their name. And then later in the morning from six to, t uh, six to eight, sorry, feed breakfast and, and people go out. Um, or if you are willing to commit that you'll provide a spaghetti dinner and some donuts for breakfast. And then material wise, we really need a freezer and a laptop. So any questions about, our church has already helped quite a bit and I appreciate that, both individuals in the church and the church itself, you have bought us several mattresses. And so we hope to have people living in the shelter this month. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Mary. So can you maybe let us know uh, when there might be something that we can uh, volunteer to help with, like packing those things or yeah, I usually an know, idea? I usually know about a week ahead of time and mm -hmm. I could give it to you to pass out. Before. That'd be great if we knew that we could share it yeah. through our channels and then uh, I'm sure uh, Mary, if you want to donate financially, Mary can let you know how to how to make that happen. That'd okay. be great. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. I think there's interest in being more involved with that mission. So we're really grateful for you, Mary, of all the time you've put in personally as, as part of that. And, and we're excited to be more involved. For well, sure. thank you. And Henry reminded me to tell you it's tax deductible. <laughs> Gifts are tax deductible. Thank you. <laughs> thank thank you, guys. you. All right. That was awesome. So that we move now into our time of offering and we would remember that if, if we were at church, uh, number one, we could have passed a little basket to just get some cash for Mary, which I wish we could do. And two, we would have passed the offering plate so that uh, you would be able to make your commitment to the church. We remember that we respond to God's grace and love by giving gifts of ourselves, our time and our energy and our hearts to our Lord. So let us reflect on our call to offer and share as uh, Neil shares the offertory um, from Andra.
Thank you, Adam, for that wonderful hymn. Friends, receive the blessing. Know as you go out into the world this week that you are loved by your pastor and by your God. And be blessed by the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 There you go. Have a great week, everybody.